Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to make mention, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That um, to be able to enforce a prenuptial agreement yeah, would mean that you'd have to have an enforceable marriage license at the time of the marriage. Yes that the state of Washington would have the jurisdiction and authority to dissolve, yeah, to obligate the enforcement of the prenuptial agreement. So I just wanted to know, of all the prenuptial agreements in this state, and well, every state of the United States, how many of the prenuptial agreements were enforceable because the individual states could dissolve a United Nations marriage certificate? Poop. Now, if there's not a state in the United States that can dissolve the United Nations Marriage Certificate because they don't have the authority to enforce a prenuptial agreement at the time of dissolution of marriage, yes, I'm going to sue you all, all 50 states. Pooh. Now, just get me all those uh, prenup agreements and the dissolutions of marriage that made them enforceable, yes. Because they are not enforceable until at the time of marriage you have a valid, yes, marriage license from a state of jurisdiction, right, or a nation of reciprocity. <laughs> now, if I don't find um, one state mm -hmm. that has the authority to dissolve a United Nations marriage uh, certificate, yeah. I'm kind of thinking these uniform laws that were written by legal scholars yes, and uh, were adopted by the individual 50 states, territories, and possessions of the United States. Yep. Uh, the Uniform Premarital Agreement Act would not be enforceable without a valid marriage license from the jurisdiction of the United States. Yes. Now, for all of you that have United Nations marriage certificates, poop. And you decided to divorce for whatever reason. I'd like to know about your prenuptial agreements that you had before you got married. Yes. Because when looking through the United Nations laws of marriage, yes, 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 it seems that men have uh, some different rights than women. Yes, yes. Now, this idea of domicile, pooch. At the time of marriage, when the United Nations marriage, um, certificate was issued yeah it could be said that we were domiciled in Kosovo Pooh, choo -choo. see at the point of issuance of Jacoba yeah we were residing in a hotel waiting to be married yeah we were mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, this idea that the state of Washington can take my sons without enforcing the actual requirements of the dissolution of marriage of the United Nations yeah. Well, there are certain jurisdictional uh, issues with the United Nations marriage license, a marriage certificate. Yeah. Now, uh, the individuals that were employed at the United Nations, right? I'm going to want to speak to them, and I'm going to want to know the last 40 years of prenuptial agreements that were issued. Yes. From what nation before you got your United Nations marriage certificate? Yes. And then of all those United Nations marriage certificates, how many of you got divorced mm -hmm, through any state of the United States where your prenuptial agreement was enforceable? Now, there's a lot of nations out there, okay? There's like 170 of them. Yeah. And I'm sure, um, well, maybe uh, Greece. Yes. Mm-hmm. They probably let their citizens do that. They get the prenup in the nation of Greece, right? They go to what was Kosovo at that time and had the United Nations issue the marriage certificate. Yeah. They moved back to Greece and had a nice marriage for approximately 10 years. 